Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Kyle Bauer visits with Robert Atchison with the Kansas Forestry Service. Then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Dwayne Taves is discussing honeybees with Matthew Malika from the Honeybee Health Coalition. And then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. We'll end with Plain Talk with Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first, Kyle and Robert Atchison visit about the Kansas Forestry Service. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer visiting with Robert Atchison. He is with the Kansas Forestry Service. Um, Bob, explain to the viewers um, who the Kansas Forestry Service is. Um, We're uh, we're a state agency that's housed within uh, the Department of, uh, well, actually within the College of Agriculture at Kansas State University. And uh, we uh, provide public service to the people of the state. Uh, in a variety of ways, and uh, the particular area that I work in is uh, within our rural forestry programs. So we're, uh, we're working with uh, farmers and ranchers throughout the state and other landowners to uh, help them manage their woodlands and their shelter belts and uh, provide uh, professional forestry advice in the way they do that. Well, and I know it, this isn't the first time you heard it, but you think about Kansas and forests, it's an oxymoron. Right, yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting place to practice forestry, and a lot of what we do here is what you would describe as agroforestry, where we're using trees and shrubs uh, integrated into uh, to modern agricultural systems uh, so, that, so that we get both conservation benefits as well as uh, production benefits. Uh, for uh, for our farmers and ranchers and truly um, by doing that you provide on both ends both getting stuff planned planted and harvested yeah we do we do it from start to finish and uh, we try to always provide um, our professional knowledge and match that with what the objectives are of the particular landowner some may just be interested in wildlife (laughs) Uh, some in the northeast and the eastern part of the state may be interested in timber harvest. Um, a lot of people uh, are interested in recreation. And so uh, we can actually manage our woodlands and our shelter belts uh, based upon what, whatever that particular desire and interest of that landowner is. And a lot of times there will be multiple interests and objectives that a landowner will have. You have a few times there's fees, but most of this the fee is minimal. Yeah, we don't charge for our services. Um, we, uh, we also work on behalf of uh, the Natural Resource Conservation Service as uh, kind of a technical service provider. Uh, and, uh, and so what that enables us to do is to uh, funnel uh, financial assistance uh, to help uh, farmers and ranchers and landowners uh, who might want to plant trees or uh, establish a shelter belt or uh, do water quality work uh, by establishing uh, trees along a stream side. Uh, One last thing quickly, you grow and sell a lot of trees every year. We do, um, around 300 to 400,000 depending upon the year and uh, those trees go throughout the state to uh, to plant new shelter belts and uh, more and more we're seeing uh, trees that are going uh, uh, along our rivers and our streams uh, to try to stabilize those stream banks uh, because of the uh, significant water issues we have in this state. Um, and we're, we want to stabilize those stream banks, keep the soil there, and not, not, in, our, uh, not in our reservoirs where, where we're losing water capacity. We're visiting with Robert Atchison. He is with the Kansas Forestry Service. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. 
You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Heather Lansdowne, Director of Communications with the Kansas Department of Agriculture, is joining us. And Heather, coming up on August the 24th will be the second annual Kansas Governor's Summit on Agricultural Growth in Manhattan. And it promises to be a busy event. We are very excited about this year's event. Last year was the first time that we had a statewide summit on agricultural growth, and we had a great turnout, and this year looks to even be a better turnout. What are some of the purposes of having a summit like this? One of the major purposes is to bring the entire industry together to focus on issues that affect all different sectors. We will spend spend the morning breaking out into different sectors and having some workshops that on those specific topics. But in the afternoon, we'll spend some time talking about issues and of concern to all the sectors and help the entire agriculture industry work together on some things and that we all share. For the soybean industry, for oil seeds like soybeans, what kind of growth and what kind of focus should there be? Well, one of the things that soybean and oil the industry has done is helped us produce some of these desired outcomes that came out of the last year's summit. And among those involve discussion on exports, discussion on um, growing other sectors of Kansas because those are large market out- outlets for oil seeds, working on faster regulatory approvals. There's several topics within the soybean and oil seed industry in specific that also affect other industries, and that's going to be part of this discussion is some of those elements. Because of the fact that with trade being such a big topic within this, not only for Kansas, but for U.S. agriculture, keeping their name out there, so to speak, is important on what Kansas agriculture is able to do. It is. I think having an event like this shows the rest of the state and the world how serious Kansas is about agriculture. And This year, we're seeing some of the federal members of our congressional delegation attend, and uh, they're seeing how important these topics are to Kansas and realizing that it's worth their time to be part of this event as well. Once again, that is coming up on August 24th. You expect a big crowd over there? We do expect a big crowd. We are asking that people register so that we can make sure that each sector discussion has a room big enough for it and that we have all the equipment and materials ready. So we ask that people register at agriculture.ks.gov slash summit. And we've already received registrations for a larger crowd than we saw last year. And so we know there'll be more that register between now and the 24th. But we do ask that people let us know they're coming so that we can be prepared and have enough materials for everyone who comes. All right. Heather, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's Heather Lansdowne, Director of Communications with the Kansas Department of Agriculture. She's been our guest on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more Farm Factor with Dwayne Taves and Matthew Malika with the Honey Bee Health Coalition. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family-owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. 
What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need, and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Dwayne and Matthew Malika discuss the Honey Bee Health Coalition. Dwayne Thames joining you once again here on uh, Ag AM in Kansas. Saying an opportunity to catch up with Matt Malika talking about uh, Honey Bee Health. Certainly an, an issue for those that are associated with the business, but many people outside of it really have no idea exactly what we're talking about and, and why it's an issue. Sure. So uh, my name is Matthew Malika. I work for the Honey Bee Health Coalition. I'm a facilitator. And so we uh, are a coalition of 40 or so member organizations, uh, everyone from uh, agribusiness and universities to uh, beekeeping organizations, nonprofits, uh, universities, and um, uh, crops. And so we're really at the intersection of crop production and honeybee health, trying to work on issues of uh, improving honeybee health as, as we're all part of the same agricultural system. We think about uh, the wide variety of crops and fruits and vegetables that, uh, that rely on honeybees as a form of, of uh, making that, uh, that process happen. Many in commercial uh, row crop agriculture don't typically see the need for it. Yeah, ex exactly. So one in three bites of the food we eat uh, are uh, pollinated. And so you have um, crops. The, uh, the First, the bees start in almonds. You have 1.6 million hives that go to almonds each year. California supplies 85% of the world's almonds. And so without, without honeybees, there really isn't any... Um, almonds in the world. Then they go up to um, you know Oregon and they go to the berries and melons, uh, all of our uh, peppers, uh, and then a lot of our citrus is, is um, uh, has pollination services. And so, really, really an important part of the agricultural system. And uh, their health is in jeopardy. Usually, uh, beekeepers would see anywhere from 15 to 30 percent losses in a in a given year. Now they're seeing 40, 50, 60 percent losses. Um, from from many factors. Uh, there is no one factor that is causing honeybee health decline. It's really a, a series of factors. It is um, a lack of forage. It is um, uh, adverse impacts from pesticides. And then it's uh, pests and pathogens like the varroa mite. And so the Honeybee Health Coalition has come together and is working on all of these issues um, in, in various working groups. And so we uh, have been around for about three years and have been making really positive impacts. Um, we uh, we developed a um, the managed pollinator protection plan symposium, uh, which was a which was a, a an effort where we worked with uh, the uh, National Association of State Departments of Ag and the EPA and um, Pollinator Stewardship Council to. Uh, bring together um, draft language for MP3s and, and help give guidance to the state-led MP3 efforts. Uh, we've come up with the Tools for Varroa Management Guide, um, which is a, a guide that explains to people how to do varroa management, how to monitor and treat, as well as a series of 12 videos. Um, we have made USDA recommendations on forage and uh, we're working with the uh, Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund to, to put pollinator forage on the ground uh, in the U.S. And so a lot of great um, um, work being done and, and really we're just trying to create and, and provide recommendations and, and on systems that where production ag and and beekeeping can can really work together and that there's not that, that there's not a you know this isn't going to work on, on my lands uh, mentality that we we're really all working together and in, in um in being all part of one agricultural system well certainly it doesn't matter whether you're a, a consumer of honey or a number of other products that bees uh, pollinate uh, those individuals in that end of production agriculture or the beekeepers themselves Making sure that uh, we continue to improve bee health uh, has a major impact on our food supply here in the U.S. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. 
Brought to you in part by the 65th Annual Eskridge Labor Day Rodeo, September 2nd and 3rd. If you love rodeo, mark your calendar right now for the 65th Annual Labor Day Rodeo in Eskridge, September 2nd and 3rd at 7 p.m. This is entertainment for your whole family, calf roping, steer mug and barrel racing and more. Now let's rodeo. This is Eric Stone Street, and as many of you know, I love my home state of Kansas. In March, Kansas ranchers lost homes, equipment, and thousands of cattle from the largest wildfires in the state's history. Imagine losing all you have in a fire. Not just your house, but your livelihood. Ranchers are beginning to rebuild, but it will take years and tens of millions of dollars to build back herds, fences, and other infrastructure. Today, I'm asking you to help Donate what you can and show your support to the ranchers of Kansas. Simply go to kansasfires.com. Your donation is tax deductible and will go to those who need it the most. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. Commodity markets dropped sharply after the USDA issued its August yield estimates. Corn and soybean production estimates came in significantly higher than most of the pre-report expectations. Dr. John Newton, American Farm Bureau Federation Director of Market Intelligence, talked about where USDA may have found those extra bushels. USDA came out with corn yields that are above trend and, and soybean yields that were well above the market expectations. I mean, we saw prices really tumble following the report. You know, where USDA is getting this information, leaning on the crop condition information as much as they are some of their surveys. Newton says another big shock in the report was the predicted soybean yield. Combine a record amount of soybean acres planted with the USDA prediction, and Newton said U.S. farmers would put out another record crop. Last year, the record crop was due to very exceptional soybean yields, and this year, the record crop is really driven by an expansion in planted area, but certainly that yield number coming in where it did led to another record crop to be expected for soybeans, and that's really pushed prices lower. In the face of you know, a record crop last year and a record crop that came online from South America, another bumper harvest of soybeans here in the United States. In order to move that product, it's going to move at a lower price. Newton says the key thing to remember is these aren't the final numbers. Late planted corn in several parts of the country means it's still maturing, so there will be opportunities for USDA to make adjustments in yield projections and planted acreage. While I expect the crop size to get a little bit smaller, I don't think it's going to get substantially smaller just because conditions are close to where they were on average. I think crop yields come in around trend in a, in a haircut to harvested area should work to pull down, especially on the corn side, the ending stocks next year. There's a lot of uncertainty in the market. Any potential reductions in that crop size could provide an opportunity to, to lock in some more favorable prices for that new crop corn and soybean. Chad Smith, Washington. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. 
The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. As fourth-generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did. And I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done, my shoulders done, section of my back, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to today on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with Dwayne Taves on Blue Shirt Day. It, it, obviously, it appears. It looks like we're matching. Yeah. Your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer. Hazel Tyndall of Shetland, England. Knew her well. Has the honor of being the fastest dishwasher in the world. An incredible record of hand washing over 100 dishes in five minutes. Fact or fiction? 105 minutes. Five minutes would be 300 seconds. That would be one plate every three seconds. <laughs> now, I Your used intellectual to, thought on it kills I me. I used when you're going to wash these. dishes that fast, and my yeah. mom made me do them again. Yeah, to do them all over again. Yeah. Um, I guess washing dishes, there's washing dishes, and then there's washing dishes. Were they well, pre washed? I mean, well, yeah, exactly. If all you have to do is dip them, or do you have to scrub them, or, yeah, I'm going to go with fiction. It is fiction. Hazel is not famous for her dishwashing ability. She's the world's fastest knitter. Knitter. Knitting 255 stitches in three minutes. And that's no yarn. Yarn to spin. Yeah, yeah. I got to win. Old Kyle got to win. Look there. Uh, you may not have ever received these before, but uh, as business owners, we receive these in the mail from time to time from the Census Bureau. Oh, really? Um, and wanting to know. Wanting to know, oh my gosh, everything from how much <laughs> toilet paper we use to, uh, you know, how many employees we have and that sort of thing. And it always comes with this. Uh, friendly reminder, reminder, your response is required by law oh. and will be kept strictly confidential. As, and uh, if you don't do this, um, bad things are going to happen to you. Uh, uh, <laughs> he'll hunt you down. It's required by law. To now, re- the question to is... To respond to a census A census is required by law. So okay. I did a little checking. And uh, talk to your local attorney. I talked to my local accountant. I said, have you ever heard of anyone that has been prosecuted on it? No, I haven't, but I'll do some checking. Cost me $7,000 to have him check. No, he didn't. (laughs) I don't know, but I did some checking too. And it appears that um, technically they can. Neither of us could find where anyone had ever been prosecuted and neither of us could find what the penalty was. Right. You know, if, if you didn't, pro- and they if you and did, they, and they prosecute, prosecute you, and they found you guilty, yeah. would you go to prison for twenty years? I don't know. How can they prove that you actually got the correspondence? Well, I will tell you. If you don't fill this out, they hound you. Yeah. And that's what it ought to say. <laughs> By penalty of we will hound you Continue until you to hunt you down. Hunt you down by phone calls and everything else. And you uh, have had statistics in college and you understand the importance of a random number of people. Sure. And so if you old Kyle is sample. that random guy, it's important that you get even if he's a zero. Right. That's and old Kyle's been a zero. Uh no, not about that part, but Anyway, the it's important that you do it. But the point is, is they always threaten you with your response is required by law. Ah. And they also say it's always confidential. Yeah. They don't want anybody knowing what you know. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. 
Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.